recording starting just to make sure it's all working so second slide first slide there we go um yeah okay i just wanted to make um there wasn't really much i wanted to say um admin stuff the only thing is reg submission three will be um available soon and I'll um, probably put up the mid-term ex exam for 2021 as practice for the midterm exam this term. It's going to be the same, the same system as last term that you've seen and um, last year's one in this course. Okay. Um, any questions besides that from anybody? Um, I, I yeah. Um, I'll put some proper details in. Um, I'm thinking that um, we'll have the exam be closed book and I'll get you to bring in a double-sided piece of paper that you can write formulas in. So that's what I'm aiming towards, um, that's what I'm shifting towards doing for the final exam. And um, I'll probably get you details on the date and time. It's probably gonna be the 28th of November. So Monday, week 12. I'm just trying still, um, I'm waiting for confirmation on the room and everything. So um, unless you, A0 okay? It's gonna be a bit funny coming in with a big sheet of paper like this into the exam room. <laughs> Probably just A4. Um, yeah, we'll also set the details a bit more close. I'll, I'll put anything that's really fixed in writing so it's um, official, I guess. But that's what I'm sort of aimed towards is a, is a not completely open book, but a form the sheet that you prepare. Yeah. All right. Um, any other questions before we do the material? Look at today's stuff on uh, rank series sequences. Oh, and um, one other thing is your mark from the revision quiz should be in the on Moodle now. So maybe just confirm it is the same mark that you um, see on the Mobius class, just in case something got missed. But it should be the, the exact same mark there. Okay, let's get started. So um, let's get into that. Okay, arithmetic series. So um, I think quite a lot of examples from last time when we introduced sequences actually were arithmetic sequences. So what do we mean by one? Well, an arithmetic series is effectively one that differs by the same constant. So something like, let me just put up an example. which I think some are coming up anyway. But something like, say, 3, 7, and 11, this would be arithmetic if we continue this pattern since these differ by a constant of 4. So this does have to be constant, right? The same term that differs. And there's also some notation. We might also call it an arithmetic progression, AP. So I think a few of the examples say AP. And we just call D the common difference. A pretty standard thing to call it. And of course, counting numbers are AAPs because they differ by one each time. Very standard. Odd numbers, they differ by two. Even numbers differ by two. We just start at a different value. And maybe something that's slightly a bit different here are numbers which leave a remainder of one when we divide by three. So one is well, one we divide by three, get remainder one, four is three plus one, so divide by three is remainder one. And you can probably see the pattern here is we just jump by three each time. Let me just confirm all this is on, yep, okay. So, so that's a common difference of three. This is a non-example just to compare things. Well, the square numbers is not a, it's not an arithmetic series a sequence because we differ by say three here for the, between one and four, five here between four and nine, seven here between nine and 16. So this is not a common difference between terms. So that's not an AP. Okay. And one way that's probably worth thinking about, I think I mentioned this in terms of linear equations last time, and that is terms of an AP really line a straight line. So let's think about a particular term. Well, if we say list B sequence of numbers, 
Well, what happens is as we shift from our n term and go from one to two, we jump up by some common difference. So this would be some d here as we increase by one. And well, this is true, this is a constant occurrence. So if we go from t2 to t3, we have a rise of one, a, a, a run of one and a rise of d, whatever this difference is. And if that's a constant difference, well, we're gonna go up in a straight line. So these are all gonna lie on a line with gradient d. Okay, so that's one way you can geometrically think about APs. Uh, questions so far? Okay, so let's test our, our sequences. So how can we show why this sequence is 5, 15, 25? Why do we expect that should be an arithmetic sequence? Any thoughts? A common D. A common D? Do we agree <clears throat> in chat? Common difference of 10. Yeah, I'd expect that we're just jumping up by a common difference of 10. So that's effectively all we need to sort of explicitly write. And so to spell it out, well, here's our first three terms. T1 is 5, T2 is 15, T3 is 25. If you look at the difference between six successive terms, so the difference between T3 and T2, 25 minus 15, that's 10. And looking at the difference between two, T2 and T1, that's 15 minus five, that's also 10. So it's pretty clear just from inspection. And the remaining terms, well, we would just assume that we would continue in this pattern. So again, the three dots, it's a bit ambiguous how we, in general, but it would be pretty reasonable to just keep adding on by 10. So because this is a constant, a common difference, D is 10. And it is indeed an arithmetic sequence. Okay, um, for the next example, would we do exactly the same thing for this one? For the sequence 3, 8, 13, 18? Yeah, it's a difference of five. Read in chat, we can just say exactly the same. Um, with the exact same reasoning, this is also an arithmetic <laughs> sequence. Yeah. So, although I suppose actually we should also mention the last one as well. So T4, 4 is 18. Looking at the difference between terms, I think I'll also add this line here because we have more than, we also have this um, fourth term, so we should check each, every one, and every one of them. So there's a common difference of five between each of these. This is 18 minus 13, which is five. So because these are all a common difference, then D is still five. I should have included that in the slides, but um, there we go. Now we have an actual general formula for the nth term of an AP, and we can explicitly just note, well, if we know the initial term, so a starting point, and we know the difference between consecutive terms, this fixes the entire, the entire sequence. So we can give any general nth term by A plus N minus one times D. There's a little bit of an argument for that to see where this comes from. Um, we can have a little look at a proof. Yeah, we check this on the values of n. Um, so you can see it satisfies if n is one, two, or three, we would expect a, a plus d, a plus two d, so they differ by d, um, right? And there's a little bit of an argument, so this is um, maybe a little bit harder, but just to see where this term comes from, well, how could we see this? Consider we have two terms, first term is A, the second term is A plus D, this should be enough to fix the entire sequence, given these are two points on a line. So if we have two points on a line, that fixes the entire line, right? So we think that, think of the points N, T, N, so thinking of T, N as a function of N, this is gonna pass through one A and two A plus D. So we have this picture, right? So we can define find the equation of this line and note any other point would lie, sequence point would lie on this line. So from here we can tell, well, what's the y-intercept? Well, if we go back a stage to go to x equals zero, we would have a term of uh, difference of a minus d. So where this crosses the y-axis should be a minus d. 
and we can get the gradient simply from the rise of a run. So y2 minus y1 on x minus 2 minus x1 gradient of d. Putting this information together tells me that the line equation is y equals dx plus a minus d. And our sequence point should be the integer points on that line. So we'll have, we will satisfy tn is d times n plus a minus d. And if you rearrange this equation a little bit, we should get back to this. So it's not essential that you could see that argument. The main thing is just to see where this, this expression comes from. Just so we're convinced of that, that step. Right, so let's use that here. So if you want an explicit formula for this algebraic series sequence 3, 8, 13, um, 18, well, how do we find that? What's the expression? Tn equals a plus n minus 1d. Yep, and we know what our a and d is, right? What's our initial term a? Three. Three. What's our common difference? Five. Five. Are we agreed in chat? a should be three and d should be five. <coughs> yep, so let's see what we get. Exactly, it's an ap. We've just shown it's an ap. So tn is a plus n minus 1 times d. Substituting in the values, three plus n minus 1 times five. And we can rearrange that a little bit to deal with the constants. So this is expanding 3 plus 5n minus 5, which is 5n minus 2. So, and we can check, double check this, right? If you substitute in n is 2, we'll get back t2 is 8. If you plug in, say, 4, 20 minus 2 is 18. So t4 is 18. So it's worth just double checking these things make sense. Okay, we all agreed with the formula there. Same thing this one. Well, we also want to show it's arithmetic. So 37, 34, 37, 34, 31, 28. Shows arithmetic and find a formula for the nth term. Well, we should check it is indeed arithmetic. So checking that T1 is 37, T2 is 34, T3 is 31. Well, the difference between, and again, we should really, I think we didn't, this one doesn't check the last one, but again, we should check it. T4 is 28. Yeah, the difference between these is still going to be minus three. That's a missing line from my part. Because this could be, say, 27, and then J is not an AP. So since it's explicitly there, we should check all the consecutive terms. Right, so um, that's our arithmetic series, a sequence there with D equals minus three. Substituting our values in, we know A, well, what's A going to be in this case? What's our, what's our A value? What was that in the chat? We get 37, correct. So simply substituting the values in gives us 37 plus N minus 1 times minus 3. Expand out the minus 3, minus 3 and plus 3 on the side. So simplifying everything together should be 40 minus 3N. And that's our general expression, our, our explicit formula for the nth term. Okay, these are all sort of short and sweet examples, I think. Let me know if you have a question or to uh, raise a point. Uh, next example, so for this, we're given the first term. So the first term of an AP is 105, so T1 is 105, and the 10th term is 6. Right, so we're given the first and the 10th term. Um, how do we find the common difference and write out the first three terms? Well, what does the first piece of information tell us? That the first term is 105. <coughs> Check on chat. A is 105. What about the fact that T10 is 6? So that's correct. How do we use the fact that T10 is 6? So I, I guess we can note that that's going to give us, um, in terms of a formula, we can find expression for T10. Yeah, exactly, everyone's got it. So um, using the fact that we can write T10 and we know what A is, we can work our way backwards to find D, solve for D. So we're given that A is 105, we know that T10 is 6. Substituting the values in together tells us that 6 is 105 plus 
the 10 minus 1 times c. So don't forget this is n minus 1, right? Not just n. If we start at n equals 1, this gives, well, simplifying gives 9d, and now we can just solve for d. So subtract off the 105, 9d is 99, divide the 9, d is minus 11. So this is decreasing by 11, by a rate of 11. Which, I mean, I suppose you could always try and explicitly write it out. So note that that's 105, try and work out what 6 is. So try and find, I guess it would be 9 values in between here. So that the 10th one is, is um, 6. Rather, 8 values in between here. But this gives us a more concrete, direct way to find it. And now that we have A and D, we can simply substitute those values in to get the general expression. Well, to find the first three terms. So just substituting in A and D tells us that Tn is 105 plus N minus 1 times minus 11. Simplify 105 minus 11 N plus 11. That's 116 minus 11 N. And to get the first three terms, we just substitute in N is 1, 2, and 3. Uh, yeah, so that is there. Okay, questions, comments. So 105, 94, and 83 are the first three terms. Okay, so far so good, I think. What about this one? Well, this time we've got the, the fifth term of an AP is 37 and the eighth term is 55. So we want to find the common difference in first term. Um, is this very different from the last example? What do we think? Can we use a very similar approach here? We know T5 is 37, T8 is 55. Yeah, that was the simultaneous equation. Yeah, so we can, let me, we can end up with simultaneous equations. What was that comment here? Yes, with the same sort of idea. So given we know T5 and T8 explicitly, we don't know A and D exactly, but we can still re-express 37 and 55 in terms of the general formula. <laughs> so let's see what we get. Yeah, so let's uh, check. You know, this is true. We've got the general formula for Tn in terms of A and D, so we simply substitute in the value of N, the 5 and 8. We'll obtain these equations. So when N is 5, we'll end up at A plus 4D is 37. Um, is that quite the same as what we have? Um, I don't think 3D because it's it's T8, right? So it should be 7D as opposed to... Oh, actually, well, let's see. Yeah, yeah there's going to be a common difference, 3D. So the first equation tells us that A plus 4D is 37. The second part, that T8 is 55, will tell me that A plus 7D is 55. Just substituting directly in. And there's various ways. You know how to do this type of problem at this stage. You could substitute. Probably just easier to eliminate. So we could just go 2 minus 1 to eliminate that A variable. So, you know, subtracting upwards, I guess. And so that cancels out our a's. We're left with 7 minus 7d minus 4d is 3d. 55 minus 37 is 18. <coughs> In here. So check. That's true as well. Yeah, you could say. Um, yeah, I suppose that would be valid enough as well. That t8 minus t5 is equal to three times the difference, and that has to be um, 18. I guess it's equivalent, right? It's the same, we're basically saying the same thing either way. So in any case, um, D should be 6. And then we just directly substitute into one of those equations to find A. So, yeah, 6 is the common difference. Um, it runs up here, up to here, right? I think there wasn't just quite enough space on the slide, right? So noting that D is 6, probably should have noted that here, actually. Um, yeah, substitute D equals 6 in the first equation, for instance, A plus 24 should be 37, so A should be 13. So 13 is the first term. Right. Um, and once I put this sort of thing. Okay, so let's talk about the sum of an arithmetic series. Now, in general, there isn't a really nice formula, 
but for arithmetic series and for geometric series, which we'll see, there is actually an expression we can simply plug into to get the sum of those terms. So again, we noted that Sn is this expression, T1 plus T2 up to Tn. And the general, uh, there's two formulas for, this, for the sum of an AP, and that's given by the following. So if we have the initial term A, if we know the last term of our expression L, and D is the common difference between them, then we can equivalently, equivalently say that S, the sum of the first N terms, will be N on 2 times A plus L. Alternatively, it's N on 2 times 2A <coughs> plus N minus 1 times D. It's pretty easy to sort of see how these are equivalent, right? Because here our L is TN. So um, simply substituting the value would get you that, go between the two values. And I thought also I'd give a bit of an argument about why this is true. So why is why do we how do we obtain this formula? So there's a nice little neat little trick to um to obtain these. So what do we do? We just simply write it out. That's the sum of the first n terms, t1 plus t2 up to tn. That's what these terms are explicitly, right? So we're adding by d, so it's a plus a plus d plus a plus 2d, etc. And on the other side, we're getting closer to L, so it's L minus D plus L. And what's the trick? The trick, well, maybe some people have seen this. The trick is to see, write the sum, but in the reverse order. So our SN is explicitly exactly the same as L plus L minus D all the way up to plus A. Now let's think about each term. So um, maybe an example helps actually. So let's say we wanted 5 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 versus 5, 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3. What happens if you add 3 and 6? What do you get if you add these two things together? You get 9. What about 4 plus 5? 9, 9, 9. So actually what we obtain is the same constant, 9 times 4. So that's exactly what happens in general. If we sum each term one by one, we've got A plus L here. A plus D plus L minus D is A plus L here. So summing these things together will give us A plus L N times, which we can find as an explicit form. It's just N times that, that term. And so to work out what SN has to be, well, we simply just look at this side and divide by 2 on the left. So that gives us the first formula directly. And then to get the second formula from here, we just note that L should be A plus N minus 1 times C because it's the nth term. So that's, I'll let you just double check that, but you'll get exactly the same thing for the second formula after you substitute. Okay, are we happy with this? You can, you can kind of just use the formula, right? So this just at least um, shows where that comes from. I think there's some historic story about Fermat or something or someone that came up with this approach. Maybe someone else knows, knows the story. Gauss? Okay, I'll take a word for it. Gauss, I suppose, then. Right, um, well, let's use it. So we want to find the sum of the first 20 terms of the sequence. So what information do we have that allows us to find S20? Yeah, what's the common difference? Two. Two. What else do we have? A, what's A? Three. And, well, in either case, we need the number of terms, our N. So what's our N value? 20, yeah. So with this, you could use the, um, the second formula directly, or it's also just equivalently easy to just find the last term, T20 and then substitute in the first formula. So either way, we'll get the same answer. Yeah, anyone's already got pretty much most of it written down. Um, I might, I'll give you the set, the other one. I think this one here uses the, the first formula. So we have these three terms. Oh, okay, I guess we use the second version, right? Um, we can simply substitute everything in. Um, yeah, there's this, thanks, Remy. Um, Remy. I couldn't remember who it was. I know there was some story about this, the case. 
So this, some of the first 20 um, values should be 20 on 2 times 2 by 3 plus 20 minus 1 on 2. So we just substitute the values in and we just simplify that. So that what is that? That's 10 by 6 plus 38. So 10 by 40, that should end up being 440. So 44 times 10. Of course, at this stage, you, hopefully you can just use the calculator, right? But we get 440. Let's try another one. So what about this one? 2 plus 5 plus 8 plus 98. What information do we have? Which terms? <coughs> We've got A and L, yep, in the quantity of 3. So we know that A is 2. L itself is 98, difference is 3. We still need to find N because in any case, we still need need that as part of the formula um, to compute the sum of the series. So we should compute that first. But we have these first three things. Right, so we still need to find N. And well, we can directly find that by noting that we expect the last term, TN should be 498. So this should be our TN here, right? So given our, well, we can find this explicit formula for Tn, it's 2 plus 3 times n minus 1, which implies 3n minus 1. Solve for Tn being 98, so 3n minus 1 is 98. That's going to give us n is 33 at the end of the day. Again, all these steps we should know how to do at this case, right? Solve backwards for n. So we know we're summing 33 terms. And well, what do you think is easier, the first or the second version of the equation? So would we use um, this one or this one? First. Yeah, the first one, because I already know the last um, uh, one. We already know the last, the last term of the series. So then that's 33, we can use the first version. Guess n is n on 2 times a, the first term plus the last term. Yeah. n minus over 2 times the initial term plus the last term. So 33 on 2, 2 plus 98. So putting everything together, it's 1650. By the way, one sanity check is this should be a whole number if these are whole numbers, right? So sometimes you can check things if it seems reasonable. Um, again, this one's again. These are these first ones are fairly standard examples. So, if we want the sum of one to fifty of three and plus two, well, we've got our TN term, and we know our bounds. So, to do this one, we know the um, number of terms we're summing. We know the initial term, and the last term we can simply get by substituting in. So, this last term should simply be three times fifty plus two. It's TN. <coughs> And again, with this, we can just use the first version of the formula. So Sn is this expression. It's 50 on 2 times 5 plus 152, which is 25 by 157, which turns out to be 39.25. Okay, so these are all these are all examples of sort of just very similar sort of ideas. So, um, Same thing for this one. So it's almost the exact same process. Um, what, what do I have to be careful of? So this first one, we had 50 terms. We started at 5, which was from 3 plus 2, and ended at 152. What's, what's something I have to be careful of with this sum? Any thoughts? <coughs> 151 plus 1. Yes, yeah, so there's there's actually 162 terms in this series, right? So um, there's this doesn't start from 1. So I have to keep in mind that my n should only be 196 terms that we're summing over. And well, we can still find the initial initial term and the final term. We still have that well to compute a. That's simply 6 by 5 minus 1, that's 29. And the last term is 6 by 200 minus 1, which is going to be 
and 199, right? One less than 1,200. And again, from this, these three pieces of information, now that we've found the initial term, the last term, and the number of terms of summing, we can some, simply use the formula. So it ends up being this number, which is this expression. So you should try and type, find the actual value, right? Okay, I think everyone's sort of okay at this stage with that. Right, this is sort of going the other way. So for this one, we're trying to work out how many terms of this series would give us some of 531, right? So in this case, well, how is this different? What do we think? What are we trying to do here? Work brackets for n. Let me just check people. So for n, yeah. So this time we're given that Sn should be 531. We're trying to find n itself. So we're given the actual sum at the end of the day with our restrictions that the first term is four, the common difference is three, a is four, d is three, so for n. And in this case, because we don't know the last term, we want to use the second formula. So we don't have L explicitly. From this expression, so the values in, we get 531 is n on two times some term with n. And now um, there's actually two n's here, right? So we have to be slightly careful solving for this. Well, let's times out that two. Well, I'll actually rather keep the two there for now. So that's going to give us eight plus three n minus three. That's three n plus five on the right. Times the two is going to give us this expression. I guess also by multiplying out. So we would have this is equal to n times three n plus five, which gives us this expression. And do we know how to solve for n from these ones? What sort of equation is this in n? Given we have an n squared and an n in it. Quadratic equation. Quadratic equation. It's a quadratic, right? And again, we can use the tools that we've seen from the first two terms to solve for this. So rearrange this a little bit. Um, I think this one, is a, let's just check. So on the other side, I think this was a bit hard. We need the quadratic form of the four. Yeah, so there wasn't very clear factor, factors for this, I don't believe. I would actually expect there should be some whole number factors, but because maybe it's not that easy to see, we can just throw it in the quadratic equation. So we'll get this beast of a thing. So, you know, standard minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac on 2a, yada, yada. Simplifying our terms, well, that's 6 on the bottom. This number inside the square root turns out to be 12, 7, 6, 9. And anyone know what that is by inspection? <laughs> I mean, you can always compute this with the calculator, right? So it turns out to be, I think it's something over 100, right? 113. So it's either going to be minus 5 plus or minus 113 on 6. That gives us two values. It gives us either 18 or minus 59 on 3. Well, which value would make sense if we're talking about terms of a series? Yeah, it should, it should just be the 18. Well, you have to be a bit careful, man, because um, I could potentially have had two positive terms. So you want to be a bit careful. You could have potentially had something that was non that was that was big enough on this side that both the plus and minus parts would give you positive. So you don't want to drop the plus and minus part straight away. You want to check it at the end of the day. You want to check it at this line. But sure. So we know it's going to be a positive. Um, sure. Yeah. But they, my point is, there could potentially be two positive terms on both the plus and minus sign here. But yes, in this case, it's just going to be um, the first one, 18. In fact, it also has to be a whole number, so that's the reason why it's 18. Okay, um, there aren't too many examples. I think there's only three more. Um, there's a bit longer. So the, the 18th term would be um, something 18 terms of this sequence would give us 320 would give us 531. Maybe you should say 18 terms here. Okay, what do we want to do for this one? So in this case, 
the sixth term of the Nash series is 23, so T6 is 23. And we know the sum of the first 10 terms is 210. So you want to be careful with reading this carefully. So S10 is 210. Find the sum of the first 20 terms. Well, um, it's still not quite that different. So we can still solve backwards as we had for the second condition. It's just we have to keep in mind the sum. So we're after S20 at the end of the day. Okay, so how do we go about something like this? Well, we still set up a system of some equations to find out A and D. The first one we can find directly in terms of A and D. So if T6 is 23, then A plus 5D is 23. So again, this comes from 6 minus 1 there. What, what do you think the second condition would be? Does anyone think they could put that in chat? If you know S10 is 210, might be a bit long. I guess we don't know the last term, so we'd need the second equation, right? So in this case, it would be simply um, n on 2 times 2a plus n minus 1 times d. So let's see what we have. This is the sum of the AP formula using the second formula, I should say. Let me say the second formula there. So it's going to give us this equation, which we can still solve for A and D. Well, write it in terms of A and D. Gives the second equation. And the point is from um, equation one and equation two, we can we can solve for A and D. So let's just note these together, that's our set of simultaneous equations. So solving from these, we can um, yeah, eliminate variable A. So this is simply two times equation one, right? We express that's 2A plus 10D is 46. Second equation from the last slide is 2A plus 9D equals 42. And from these two, we can simply subtract go 3 minus 2. So it's going to give us D is equal to 4. And to work out A, we would simply substitute back into, say, something like A, something like 1. So 1 would give us that uh, D plus 5. Sorry. There should be a D there, shouldn't it? A plus 5 times 4 should be 23, so D should be 3. A should be three. Last lecture before the flexi week, right? <laughs> so these give us our two variables, and now we've fixed this sequence. So now that we know the explicit sequence, um, what's required for these terms to find the some of the first twenty terms, we simply can just use the first formula, or the second formula. So we're given A, D, and N. We're summing twenty terms, so N is twenty. And substituting those values in will get us the following. So uh, this expression 20 on 2 times this value. Simplify the value. It turns out to be 6 plus 19 by 4. And that's um, 38, 56, 86, 82. So it should be 820. Yeah, 820. Thoughts so far? And this one's more fun. Let's have a think about this one. So this one, we're talking about the triangular numbers again, right? So um, I think I noted this briefly last lecture. But how do we compute them? Well, we simply keep adding on rows. So here's 1, T1. It's just a single dot. So tilde 1 is 1. How do we get the next one? We add two dots below it. So keep adding rows. So this is the total, which is um, 3. We take the triangle here and add another row here. So tau 3 would be 6 by adding on another 3. And so you can see the pattern continues by just adding on rows. So you should get n. And so this gives us another sequence. And we want to work out, find a formula for the nth triangular number and show that 
sum of two consecutive the sum of two consecutive triangles is in fact a square number, which is a pretty interesting property, right? You wouldn't expect it, but it is. It's an AP so? Well, let's check. So one to three, what's the common difference? Two, three to six, what's the common difference? What do we immediately conclude about whether it's an AP or not? No. It's not, it's not a common difference. Three is not equal to two. So um, it's based on the sum of a, of a, of the counting numbers, which is an AP, but the sequence itself is not AP. Okay, so we want to work out the form of the nth triangular number. Well, as, as we saw, it's just, we obtain it just by adding on rows with one more dot. So it's simply one plus two plus three, etc., up to N. So really it's just the sum of an AP. So we can directly use the formula we know. We know the first term, we know the last term, we know the number of terms. So A is one, D is one. We're summing N terms. So it's simply N on two times one plus N. Maybe we should have also noted that the last term is N here, which is obvious from here, right? So that just simply tells us that tau N itself is N on two times one on one plus N. So that's our tau, uh, tau n. And if we consider the sum of two consecutive numbers, so given that we've got this explicit formula, then adding two of them, well, to find the sum of two consecutive terms, we just simply put in the value of tau n and then add by one for the value of tau n plus one, as in, as in substitute the value with n plus one. And now we simplify and hope we get what we expect, which is a perfect square. So put this over a common denominator, it's n times n plus one plus n plus one times n plus two. There's a common n plus one here, right? So we can just factor that out. Factor it out to get a simple expression, left with n plus n plus two on the right. That's two times n plus two. But there's a common factor there, right? We could factor out a two from the top going to give us 2 times n plus 1 all squared because we get n plus 1 as our other factor and we cancel out the 2s. Is that a perfect square? It is. It's n plus 1 squared which is a perfect square and you can see it from, from um, we could test with an example, right? If I take 3 plus 6 which is tau 2 plus tau 3, this is 9 which is 3 squared. So this is 2 plus 1 all squared, right? There's some pretty interesting properties with some of these sequences and series. Questions, comments so far? If we take a look at the last example. Okay, let's take a look at the last one. Um, so these all just have some various um, different variants of using sums and of APs and APs themselves. And we can sort of think about some um, real world scenarios, right? So um, what do we have here for our scenario? Just to get a picture, so we have a stack of cans and the supermarket stacks five cans on top. So I'm just gonna make these dots because of course that's what we would write these as. Um, maths. And so if we think about each row, the first row has five. In the next row, well, how do we stack the next one? We simply add two more cans. So I suppose maybe it's something like this, which is not really safely stacked. But the second row would say have seven, right? Cans listed. How many cans are in the third row? Nine, yes. Yeah, so you can see where this is continuing. We'd have nine for the third row. And this, again, would define an AP, right? Because we're adding two each time between them. So we could simply list these, right? So T1 would be five, T2 would be seven, and T3 would be nine. As we work out how many cans are in the nth row. Okay, so let's think about what we're actually asked to do. So now that we've got an idea of what um, of our sequence of cans, we want to work out the number of cans in the 11th row down. So we know, say the third row down would have nine cans. Um, any thoughts? How can we compute the number of cans in the 11th row? 
What do we think? Yeah, and there's 11. Mm -hmm. A is 2 and A is 5. Is that enough, everyone? Do we agree with that? Our N is 11, the number of terms we're looking for is the 11th term. Our common difference is 2 and our initial term is 5. Read in chat. Yeah, so I believe it like that. So, um, uh, uh, we can't, <laughs> they're all this, they're, it just says number of cans. We're not going to distinguish which can is better than which can, or, or maybe, maybe they're all bad. Uh, you can make up your own third part of that if it's, if it's your cake. Okay, so, um, that's probably blasphemy, isn't it? The stack of the Pepsi's next to the Cokes. <laughs> all right, um, Let's deal with just the number of cans for today. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we can define TN to be the number of cans. It's an AP with what, five and two. We're trying to find the 11th term. So here's our general formula for the nth, um, the nth row. In this case, we're after T11, so I probably should have put T11 there. So that's gonna be two times N plus three. So our, well, okay, yeah. So for the general, for the 11th row, T11 would be two times 11 plus three. Actually, you're right. Actually, I don't need the, the 11 there because this is um, just simplifying, right? But still just general TN. Okay. Um, apostrophe getting old. Um, what apostrophe? Oh, it's one of those. Ah, oh, yeah, it's one of those ads, isn't it? Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. 25. So, and then again, with these real world ones, it's nice to just sort of just tie it up to the scenario so we can say that there are 25 cans in the 11th row just to express what it actually means. And the last one really is just um, um, pretty, we know how to do this from what we've seen so far. We know that there are 320 cans in the display altogether, whether they be Pepsi or Coke, and we want to work out how many rows there are. So, I mean, this is, what do we know? What, what does the 320 represent? this case, the sum, right? So we're really just saying if we're given the sum, how many terms are there? So it's one of these sort of problems. We don't know the L, so we still need to use the the second formula directly in terms of A and A and N and D. And so to substitute these values in, here's our second formula. We require the N for which SN is 320. So maybe I can just quickly note that here, this is what this represents. Right, find n. So 320 is n on 2 times n, 2n plus 8. That does, that's going to give us a number of quadratic. So it's very similar to the last example in this case. I think this one has a nice factorization. So I'll just put in the details here. So it's another equation in n, which you can actually factorize a bit easier. Expanding and rearranging gives n squared plus 4 and minus 320. And we can simply check some factors of 320, it'll end up being 20 and 16. So those differ by four and we want a different sign on each side. That's gonna give us solutions minus 20 and 16. And what well, we should know which one's the more valid one, right? So it should be 16 because that's the one that's positive. We can't have negative number of rows. We can't remove our Pepsis and cans. <laughs> um, so we've got 16 rows in total in the display. So otherwise it's the same sort of techniques, it's just we had to sort of um, spot that there's a series sequence, AP sequence in the scenario. Okay, I think that's right on the on the time, so I better leave it there. Um, uh, I'm more of a Coke person than Pepsi. Maybe that says something about me. All right, I might stop the recording here. Any queries, queries or questions so far? I picked this up after Flexi Week, so it is indeed Flexi Week next week. Um, there's no lectures. I will get the reg submissions in and I'm ready for you very soon. I'll um, uh, get some, some details of the midterm exams. So you're ready for that 
uh, the following Friday after we're back. I think that's when, it's when we're having it, mate. <coughs> Thanks, have a nice evening. Let's stop the recording.